I like how the ghost tried to bait Yoshiki into using the pump room on Ayumi right here. Because why else would they give him the key at this moment? Pump room, huh? I've had enough. Alright, I know exactly where you are. Was that? No, there's no way. Come on, give me a break here. Shinozaki! Damn it, she's not here. I guess that really was her then. What the hell is she thinking? I mean, you had to check. What is wrong with me? What am I doing? I should never have taken my eyes off her. This is all my fault. God damn it! Get in there, Yoshiki. Pretty sure this is where the waves were coming from. It is. If it's not, it's to the right. It's her. Don't worry, Shinzaki. I'm pulling you up. Shinzaki! 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 Good, at least she's still got a pulse. Shinozaki! Shinozaki! Oh, hi! Come on, breathe already, <laughs> damn it! God. Don't worry me like that. You back with me now? So tell me, why the hell did you jump into the pool? You called me out there, didn't you? I... what? I heard your voice, so I ran outside, and after that, I don't remember much else. Next thing I knew, my vision was all this sickening green color, and my mouth was full of water. God damn it, was this the work of those ghosts again? I can't believe they can trick us so easily. There's got to be something in that pool. Ugh, there's something stuck in my tooth. Oh god, it's like algae or something. I wonder if the showers still work. Nothing. I can't get rid of this horrible taste. I smell absolutely putrid. I hate this. How does she think I feel? Shinozaki, how about we go out into the rain and wash ourselves off a little? Though I don't know how much help rain water will be for getting the taste out of your mouth. Alright then, let's go. Make do with what you have. After this, I guess we'll need to figure out how to dry our clothes. Dora. Feeling better? <sighs> yeah, surprisingly, I was able to rinse my mouth out pretty thoroughly. <laughs> Where are you? That's good. So, Shinozaki, while I was out there, I came across a room in the back, and i kind of like to check it out. I'll go with you. That's probably for the best. Alright, let's go. Alright. Onwards. Let's keep 
key was surprisingly brittle and it cracked in half. It's gone. The key is unusable. Uh, va valve wheel is labeled drainage. Turn it. Yes. I'm just gonna skip the, the whole thing. Here we go. <clears throat> I like how the CGI's are animated. You can tell, you can see the rain wire having ripples in that image. It's not a still image anymore. Uh huh. Another name tag. Uh huh. All right. The dim lights around you uh, around you are reflecting out something deep inside the drainage grate. Try to fish it out. Yes. What is this thing? Some kind of handle? Rusted valve wheel found at the bottom. People probably sucked into the wire when it was drained. I removed the wheel from the water pump and threw it into the pool. Hopefully that'll keep anyone from finding the little treasure I left in the spigot. That bitch killed my friends. She can spend eternity without a tongue for all I care. Uh, I think I know. I think I think I think I know. We have a we have a wheel. We just gotta put it on something. Sorry, was I popping over? You for feeling cool. Yeah, there it is. <sighs> That's as far as it's gonna go. <sighs> I think it's rusted to turn, uh, too rusted to turn anymore. All right, yep, a little confused on where that went, but I knew it had to be somewhere here. There it is. It's small hemp bags and uh, with some of the buds falling from the spigot. Elementary school ID name tag attached to it. Tokiko Tsuji. The bag appears to contain several hu uh, severed human tongue. It's a girl's name. Yep. Um, how many name tags do we have? Found all name tags from Distant Futures Elementary School. Distant Futures. Oh my God! We only have one name tag left. Distant Futures. I'm not familiar with that, uh, with the characters from that school in this game. I don't really know, but there was an achievement tied to it, so it must be some of uh, some form of significance. Alright, I think I know what to do. Now we have to choose <laughs> Yep. Which one do we give it to? This one. <laughs> She's got no head above her chin. How am I supposed to know whose tongue we've got? Pull out the tongue bag? Yes. It's already too late now. Elgor's spirit is staggering towards Ayumi, blood gushing from her gaping uh, cross section of head as she walks. Please be the right one. So, Kiko Suji. This is yours, isn't it? I'm giving it back. Offered spirit to Kiko's tongue. 
what happened. The other ghost is headed this way. We have to run. Yep. Oh, hey, it's the girl in the red dress. Here we go again. Where the hell is it going to take us this time? Where your friend was splattered. In the floorboards beneath that wall. Right under her globby entrails. Where the floor dips and the blood pools. Drip, drop, drip, drop. Smelly, smelly, icky, icky. Get in there good and dig it out. Getting a good laugh out of this, you sick son of a bitch. God, if that's where it is. I'm not sure if we can ever bring ourselves to get it. Is someone there? Morishige, you're alive! Ah, Kishinima, and our class rep. I'm glad to see you both are safe and sound. Hmm? Hmm? What happened? It's a long story, so where have you been? I was in the second wing until a short while ago, but suddenly lost consciousness. And when I woke up here, I felt as if the air had somehow changed. Oh yes, I did briefly cross paths with Machida and his sister. You did? So they're okay too? They are. No, so when I next ran to Machida's sister, it seems she and her brother had parted ways. Uh, Morishigi? What is that in your hand? <gasps> Morishigi appears to be grasping a blood-soaked pouch in his mm. hands. Hmm? Oh, this? <laughs> I uh, found it under the floorboards in the hallway. <laughs> Just up these stairs. <laughs> is it some kind of charm? Do you want it? Please, take it. I'm merely searching for a certain someone. So, I have no need for charms at the present time. <laughs> the glasses flare meme. Received another tongue bag from Rishiki. As with the others, there's a student ID name tag attached to the front. Heavenly Host Elementary School, Yuki Kano. Well, I should be going now. Is something wrong, class rep? You look like you've seen a ghost. Ah, yes, one more thing. Mochita said we should all try to meet in classroom 1A. Oh, okay. I, I'm guessing... It wasn't from, you know, Suzumoto's spot. Maybe it shifted over a few feet, and he got it from there? I mean, if he didn't, then... That really freaked me out. Did you see his hands? They were covered in blood. I mean... He doesn't know. Nobody's told him. Who's, who's going to tell him? Who's going to tell him that the person he's searching for was the entrails you just dug through and you snapped photos of with your phone. Like, who, who, who's, who's gonna tell them? Who is gonna tell them? Alright, but we are... Unfortunately in a... No, 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 not right here. Right, no, not right there either. Uh, it's probably right here. That'll do. Okay. So we are in an unfortunate position. Because 
we are missing one name tag. I am going to be at liberty to look up a guide to find it because I I do not want to mess this up. I said died in pool but is unaware of their own demise. So there's a corpse somewhere in here. Or something. Locker's empty. A high school uniform has been shoved haphazardly into this locker. There it is! Found all name tags from Lexern Senior High School. That's all of them. That's all of Chapter 4 name tags. We did it. We nailed it. Alright. Now let's end this. Give it back. Give it back. This girl's missing an eye. All we've got is a tongue. Is that going to be enough? What do we do? Do it. The girl lowers her head and begins rocking slowly back and forth. Yuki Kano. This is for you. It is yours, isn't it? Offered the spirit Yuki's tongue. Thank you. Thank you very much. We did it. We did it, Shinozaki. All three of them. No, no more. Every time I talk with these ghosts, I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to death myself. Do you have any idea what that's like? I keep picturing how I look when, I, when I'm dead, and I'm not even trying. It just pops in my head all on its own, and it's such a horrible image. I want to go home. I just want to go home, back to mom and my sister. And Machida. Shinozaki. Alright, next one is mine then, okay? Okay. So just try to pull yourself to get ah! God damn it! Not again! This one's big too. The diary. It's being written in. Was I knocked out? Where am I? Is this our classroom? No fooling. Satoshi or Yui Sensei? Guess there's no Satoshi or Masui or anyone else, huh? Satoshi or Yui. Personal facts, one classroom to nine, homeroom teachers. Yep, this is, this is the homeroom. The needle clock is, uh, I was pointing to eight. There's not a soul in sight. <laughs> Shinazaki. <laughs> hey, wake up. <laughs> She's breathing at least. <laughs> Shinazaki, <laughs> come on, wake up already. Take a look around you. I can hardly believe it myself, but here we are. No way. We're back. For real. Is this really our school? It's really real. Check it out. Here's my desk. Mine too. It's right here. I can't believe it. It's true. Yeah, we made it. We're home. We're home. Yeah, it's going to be a short-lived victory, though.
All right. Well, um. I never thought I'd live to see home again. Satoshi, I you is Satoshi. This isn't Satoshi, Missy, or anyone else, huh? Yeah, we've already talked about that. Venturing out in search of others, do you find that the, even the janitor has likely gone home? The lights are out and the, the halls are pitch black. Only red glow of the light next to the fire extinguisher offers respite from the quaint, quiet darkness of the school hallway. Sitting around the dark corners of our school building at 8 in the evening just feels so surreal. As the thunder and rain grow in intensity, the windows begin to consecrate with moisture, turning white in contrast to the corridors of a sea of black. Is this reality? Was everything up to now just a dream? Where am I right now, and what am I doing? What? Shizaki, what's wrong? Oh my god, that's animated! Oh my god! Okay! Okay, I see, I see, you cooked a little. I, I see you went an extra length that you didn't need to do. Um. Oh, they're blinking. They're blinking. The eyes, they blink. What the hell is this? It's not over, is it? Why isn't it over? Why? Damn it. Oh my god. You. Go back. Don't come any closer. <laughs> it was a rainy evening at the school, just like this one. On the day I was kidnapped. I remember I had a fight with my mom that morning. Why is she telling us this? I have no idea. I didn't want to see her face. So after school, I decided that instead of going home, I'd park myself in the outdoor walkway for a little and watch the rain. That's when Mr. Yoshikazu showed up. He sat down next to me. I told him about my fight with mom and he kept listening really closely and just kept saying, uh huh, uh huh. He was sick, so he couldn't speak much, you see. But he was a very kind man. I really liked him. But then... You two are nice people. I'm so sorry. She's so tiny, she must be a fifth grader. Yuki Kano, right? Uh, thank you for what you did back there. For making the effort to help those of us who were killed in that school. Didn't we succeed though? So why are you still here? No, you didn't. But we returned your tongues, we gave you back your ability to speak out. And we even got your murderer pent for what he did. Is it just you can't forgive him no matter what? Appeasing us isn't about forgiveness. It doesn't matter if we forgive or not. Repentance is between the criminal and the victim. It's a sole act uh, capable of moving us. And we exist as fragments of a sacred ground upon which Heavenly Host is sealed. I believe that moving us is your best course of action. But it's not enough. His repentance just wasn't enough. So you're saying his words, the words spoken by the doll, weren't good enough to appease you? That's not... Huh? So what then? 
Why do you feel the need to trap one instant stranger after another in this godforsaken place? You child spirits are the ones who summon us there, aren't you? That's... not true. The hell do you mean by that? We're just cogs that hold the close spaces together. But you... you killed Suzumoto, didn't you? Wait! Huh? Let's hear her out. I'm just glad I was able to get the two of you back to safety. Why the hell are you suddenly so concerned about us? I heard about a situation like this from my sister once. A lost soul whose life ended so violently and abruptly, leaving her with a mountain of worries and regrets. It's kind of like stopping short the edge of madness. With all sorts of thoughts and feelings swirling around in your head, your kindly nature and your sudden hatred and panic begin to spin round and round, and you start acting without any sort of control. Your sister is some kind of medium or something? Yeah, something like that. So what you're saying is, this little girl and the creepy little girl we met before are two sides of the same coin? I feel for you, I really do, so please, please bring the rest of them back. Moshida, Misu, and everyone else too. Bring them all back home. Come on, you can do it, right? I don't think that's possible anymore. Why not? Those close spaces have eaten a lot of innocent souls, far too many in fact. The grudges of those who died there have filled every last corner of them, there's no room left. And because the agony and pain has nowhere else to go, it's begun feeding on the minds of souls like us who are bound there. It won't be long before I turn back to a vengeful spirit who attacks people like you without mercy. <laughs> So we're going to lose you as an ally, then. So why don't you hurry up and bring them home right now? Isn't there any of us who, uh, any way for us to save Uchida and the others? There may be one way. What is it? I think you already know. You have to return to the closed spaces. Find all four of us Heavenly Host serial kidnapping and murder victims. And put all of us to rest, then the closed spaces won't have their cogs anymore, so it'll begin to fall apart. And you just might get your friends back. You expect us to go back? And this time, instead of just having one person left at peace, we have to go back to the drawing board and piece all four of you? Why can't you tell us the reason your, our previous efforts weren't good enough? What is there to hide? It's just... Something I don't want to remember, but if you really want to know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything that happened. Yuki's spirit gently took hold of Ayumi's hand, and in an instant the two beings seemed to merge together into a single mind. <laughs> what, what's going- Ah! Shizaki. It hurts. It hurts. Alright, yeah. Huh? What happened to me? Didn't I pass out? So why am I fully aware right now? I can't see a thing, and I can't move. It's like that feeling you get when you're really tired. Sleep paralysis, I think? Ah, where? Why can't I move? Okay, sprite work was a little goofy there, but it's hard to make a sprite of someone in, like, that kind of position. Shishiko Shinozaki, the little girl in the red dress, the only survivor of the horrific murders that occurred in Heavenly Hills Elementary School. Following incident, Shishiko's family fled from the area, moving to another prefecture to escape the frightful memories that remained here. 
Strangely, however, I have been unable to locate uh, any other records of the Shinzaki family. No matter where I look, the only information I can find about them comes from newspaper reports on the Heavenly Host murders. Granted, when the elementary school becomes the stage of a grisly consensus that is portrayed by none of the principal's own son, it stands to reason that the scandal would have served as the primary focus for public interests, with all other details fitting into the background. So, of course, after learning that Sachiko was safe, further news of her whereabouts was largely ignored in favor of the media circus surrounding the school. But there's more to it than that. People weren't just uninterested in learning of Sachiko's history or whereabouts. There was simply no, there was simply no data to be had. I can't move my body because of sleep paralysis, I guess. But I can clearly see the room I'm in now. There's one boy and two girls in here, aside from myself. I recognize them. There are children who were killed in the heavenly house during that incident, but they're still alive. Unfortunately, they're all, all, all bound by hand and foot and just sprawled on the floor, and so am I. That's the real reason I can't move. Somebody, please save me. <laughs> no, stop. No, please, no. I, I, her I, eyes. No, I can't see. Now I'm blindfolded. I can't see a thing that's happening to me. And since my hands and feet are tied up, I can't remove the blindfold either. That just makes everything so much worse. I guess because I can't see, I begin to listen more intently. The helpless cries of the other children echo off the walls of the cramp room. I'm so scared, it feels like my head's going to explode. What are you doing to me? Why am I being blindfolded? Untie me, cut the ropes. I won't be able to use my hands and feet, please. Please. I kept begging and pleading, but all I heard in response was a man walking away from me. In order. Okay. In order. I've never heard screaming like this before. It's pure primal terror cutting through the air, like a perfect sine wave. It's the boy at the end. I feel it feels like he's being he's been screaming for eternity. I think he's been killed right now. Oh God, what the hell is he doing to him? No one deserves this. Why isn't God allowing him to fall unconscious so he doesn't have to suffer? It's been at least half an hour now. Those inhuman screams of a young boy being ripped apart from the inside have finally come to a halt. Without even a single moment of silence, the first of the girls in the line is, uh, is next to scream for her life, and the symphony goes on. God, I can't take any more of this. I'm losing my mind. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Is it still going on? Come on, just die already. Die already? God, what is wrong with me? You know what? I don't care. Just get it over with and leave me in peace.
Finally, after hearing a sound like a heavy object being dropped, the noise stopped and the room grew quiet again. Those footsteps are getting closer. All my hair is standing up on end at this point. Everything below my stomach feels like it's frozen and I've suddenly been struck with severe diarrhea. In order. God, why am I relieved by the silence? The kid next to me just died. Which means it's my turn now. Someone got me up by the hair. They're pulling my head up. And taking off my blindfold, which means I get to see the face of my killer. The four missing children were found in the basement room at Heavenly Host Elementary School, unused and officially sealed since the building's construction. When authorities entered, they were greeted with an inhumanly horrific sight. Based upon the evidence at the hand, the murder weapon was determined to be a pair of large sewing scissors found in the hands of the accused. This scare suspected some hesitation on the man's part. However, as the deceased victim's wounds did not indicate that his full strength had been used. Nonetheless, he had clearly acted with extreme malicious intent. The official cause of death for the three murdered children has been listed as loss of blood following removal of the But the actual state of affairs was not quite so clinical, nor even so pleasant, if you can believe it. The following details have been extrapolated from information previously unreleased to the public, or at least previously unreported by the news outlets. The details of the crime are based on the official police testimony of Sachiko Shinozaki herself. Evidently, the victims were bound, blindfolded, and spaced out on the floor, then killed one by one. One was repeatedly stabbed in the abdomen with the aforementioned pair of scissors, then many of his internal organs forcibly dug out. His discarded innards were found partially buried beneath the earthen floor of the basement room. Another was stabbed in the head dozens upon dozens of times with such extent that all flesh and bone above her jawline was essentially minced away. With my blindfold removed, the sight that appeared before me was more horrific than anything I could possibly imagine. The person staring back at me, brandishing a blood-soaked pair of sewing scissors, wasn't a large man from earlier at all. Oh, really? You don't say! It was one of the children. It was the little girl, her face dyed red with the blood of her victims. She was staring intently at me with soulless gray eyes, and then she just started giggling. <laughs> She was opening and closing the blade scissors over and over again, and the sound kept echoing throughout the room. Then she took those dull, rusty, thoroughly blood soaked blades and slowly brought them closer and closer to my left eye. How? Why? Why is it you? The third victim was stabbed in the left eye an indeterminate number of times. Man, alright, yeah, that's the biggest, that's the big plot twist. The killer was not the principal's son at all. It was just, it was the fourth victim, you know. Because it's a little odd that a survivor is haunting this school, right? I mean, it was, it was spelled out to you right there. Um... But yeah, man, can, imagine being like, imagine being like super, like, imagine being like a teaching instructor and then getting like framed by a seven-year-old for like murder. Until her eyeballs became soup-like in consistency, she was eventually just left like that, slowly bleeding to death in horrible agony. Although, I don't imagine Sachiko is any ordinary seven-year-old. Strangely, it was only after these mutilations had already been inflicted that the killer went back to severing the victim's tongues.
執筆している私も胸の悪くなる。私は悪魔の処遇で、ジドウ3人が残殺されるのか、ジドウ3人が残殺されるのか、ジドウ3人が残殺されるのか、ジドウ3人が残殺されるのか、ジドウ3人が残殺されるのか、ジドウ3泣きじゃくる彼女の証言から言い換えるなら彼は犯人確定に追い込んだ超本人である。Now, going back to the hunt for information on this unfortunate girl's whereabouts, it was her words that ultimately led to Yoshikazu's sentencing. Therefore, it comes as no real surprise that the sense of information pertaining to her and her family would be withheld. That's to be expected. What's not expected, however, is that there's not even the slightest trace of information left to find. It's as if it simply never existed. Hmm. Are you saying that? We were killed that these people were killed by a seven year old girl that didn't exist to begin with. Therefore, therefore, I cannot help but、uh, consider alternate possible explanations. And I remind you, this is mere conjecture. One question keeps nagging in the back of my mind Was Yashikazu Yanagahora really the murderer of all three victims? It's possible this crime was not actually perpetrated by him at all. Think about it. In his final days, Yoshikazu was incapable of communicating with others through speech. And despite his childlike reversion, he had always been a personable and friendly man. As the saying goes, he wouldn't have heard a flock. All his relatives, friends, and neighbors confirmed as much. Shocked to hear that such a kindly man could commit these unconscionable atrocities. He certainly had no motive for the crime. Either there was nothing for him to gain for it, or there was nothing for him to gain from it. Then again, he may simply have lost his mind. Look at his father. It was around the same time that Principal Takamine Yagadahori suddenly began speaking in tongues and acting in a most peculiar way. Not to mention scribbling incomprehensible gibberish all over his walls as if possessed. He seemed frightened of someone and would often be found crouching in the corner of his office, moaning and thrashing when visitors came by. If he could wind up in such a beleaguered state with no warning, then perhaps so too could his son. I believe that we're looking at a curse far more powerful than anything anything man could devise. From the time it opened the stores to the day it closed them forever, Heavenly House Elementary School sealed basement room has existed some form of cursed ground. And to find the underlying cause, we must go back beyond the infamous kidnapping and murder incident. Back a whole twenty years. I believe I may have found a clue that could shed some light on the situation. It may be a bit far-fetched as leads go, but it's a lead nonetheless. Regrettably, since Heavenly House has not only closed down and demolished altogether, another school and another school built in its place, it's no longer possible to investigate the basement room directly. But my protege has found what may be the next best thing. Something that can make the impossible possible once more. Preparations are being made to pursue this lead even now. They are talking about the charm. Be sure not to miss the next installment. It may be the scoop of a lifetime. Kaukabiki. So Kaukabiki went did the charm to get here to research this, and that's why we keep getting these things. All right, continue to chapter five. All right, we're all caught up with、uh, my old let's play. And the best part is, I don't have to emulate anything. Yay! All right, we have the final chapter to do. I think we're going to end this here, as the classic,、uh, as the original like menu music is back again. We've done everything. Yoshiki and Yumi return to this world, but yep. We see the truth now. Chapter five. We have our work cut out for us. I'm pretty sure there's new shit in chapter five that I cannot even conceive. So, we both, me, the recruits, everyone, we are all blind in chapter five, including me, who has played this game before in the past in different versions. There is new shit, so much new shit in Chapter Five. But、uh, yeah, we're gonna get to some unanswered questions、uh, and some stuff.
in chapter 5. Uh, so look forward to that because we're finally going to complete Corpse Party on this channel. And no, I will not be playing Book of Shadows. I will not be playing Blood Drive on this channel. Don't bother asking. I'm not doing it. Alright? The game should have ended with this. Alright? Just... I, I would like to keep that experience authentic. So, just please understand, like, you can just, re like, you can see if you want, but just don't make me go back and relive it. It's... It it does it's not corpse party anymore. At that point. Uh anyway. Uh that's all I have for now, so please like enjoy it. Subscribe from Fire Force Day. This was a long one, but I got lost a few times. And this is a considerably long chapter. So uh farewell everyone, and uh Yeah. Goodbye.